This is Alan Farley from FX Empire. Please subscribe to the FX Empire YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about volume indicators. Volume indicators are technical tools used to evaluate a security's bull and bear power, which side is in control. Some volume indicators uh, look like uh, price patterns. They uh, form highs and lows, while others oscillate across the central zero line. Now we're going to use uh, Apple, uh, the Apple chart in order to take an investigation of these uh, five indicators. We're going to start with uh, pulling down the studies and going to our first one, which is accumulation distribution. So you type that into the little blank box here and it pulls out everything that starts with an ACCUM and we have accumulation distribution. Now this is a real classic volume indicator which uh, looks at a price range during a day which side won, in other words, whether uh, the security uh, closed higher or lower, and then it adds a volume to the uh, next, uh, or adds a calculation to the next bar, uh, forming these patterns. Now, uh, accumulation distribution patterns are very, very simple to interpret. When, uh, when, accumula when the accumulation distribution indicator is rising, then the security is under accumulation. When the accumulation distribution indicator is falling, then the uh, security is under distribution. Now, this is uh, the great middle ground here where you don't get a lot of either. We have range bound markets, which you don't get a lot of accumulation or distribution. Now, levels are also important in accumulation distribution. As you can see, we made a peak right here. And then uh, we have uh, a, a partial breakout right here, followed by a failure, followed by a probably a little bit more legitimate breakout. Now, you could argue that this is a cup and handle pattern if you really have the eyes to see it. And that's because uh, accumulation distribution indicator can form patterns that look very similar to uh, uh, price patterns, like a price bar, a cup and handle pattern. So it's uh, very important in terms of uh, accumulation distribution to compare the current price and level and directions going in with what's going on up here in the price pane. Now, when we get a rising accumulation, but the security is falling, that's a bullish divergence. When we get falling accumulation and the uh, security is still rising, that's a bearish divergence. Uh, we have convergences here. In other words, uh, the both indicator both indicator and uh, price turned at about the same time. So there's a, a very good uh, correlation between the two. So we're not seeing that, but you will see it over time, especially if you look back at one, two, and three year charts, you could pick up some very excellent long-term signals because a lot of times, even though buyers stop buying or sellers stop selling, that doesn't necessarily uh, stop a trend dead in its tracks due to momentum. So you can, early pick, you can always pick up very uh, early a buy and sell signals using accumulation distribution indicator. Now moving on, let's go uh, to the uh, classic uh, accumulation distribution indicator, which is uh, on balance volume. We'll clear this off, remove this, go to on and balance. And here's on balance volume. Now this indicator is more popular, over, has become more popular over the years. Uh, than the accumulation distribution indicator. However, it does the same thing, but it does it in a different way. Uh, the on balance volume does not look at daily range. It just looks at whether a security closed higher or lower than the previous bar. And if it closed higher, uh, then it adds a, a figure to the, to the accumulation, to the OBV setting. And if it closes lower, it subtracts that, uh, that figure from the accumulation, from the OBV setting. So you get slightly different kinds of patterns. You can't see, uh, uh, exactly the same kind of pattern here on the OBV, but you can see the similar sort of uh, uh, accumulation over here and distribution down here and a lot of noise right in here. Levels are important with uh, OBV just like they are with uh, on a balanced volume. As you can see, this is offering a little bit of a more accurate picture. You notice how this level set up as resistance and then it stayed as resistance for a very long time. We have a couple little minor breakouts, nothing that really tells us that uh, new buyers are coming into the market. And we also have this downturn in this, from this little breakout. We have this failed breakout uh, on the same day that, the, uh, that Apple posted a, a multi-month high. So you can see from these kinds of divergences, this is a bearish divergence where uh, the OBV is dropping, but prices either uh, sideways or still rising. Uh, and then it uh, becomes an early a signal for a uh, buy or sell when you get divergences, either a, uh, a bearish divergence when, uh, uh, when accumulation is falling and price is rising, or a bullish divergence when accumulation is rising but price is falling. It's a very, very valuable indicator. And again, keep in mind the levels, because these levels are important. 
So if uh, if this Apple correction comes down to this level, you're going to be watching and looking for support to come into the market. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at uh, chicken money flow, which is a variation on the theme. We'll, we'll remove this one, go and put in chicken. This is Mark Chicken, who uh, created this indicator. And uh, chicken money flow um, measures accumulation and distribution, just like the other two indicators, but it does it in a different way because, look, it's oscillating across a central line. Now, this is a big deal. Uh, the accumulation uh, distribution indicators, the first two were not oscillators. They would go, uh, they would rise and fall just like trends, but this one uh, determines the degree of trending and also some directional information. As you can see, we have strong trends. So we have, we have uh, Chaikin's money flow going up to a very high level right here. Uh, then it comes back down. Now, look at this. This is interesting. See how it comes back up? But this is coming down because this is the degree of trend. Now, the degree of trend, if the, if the uh, instrument stops trending, that will start to drop Chaikin's money flow. So it's oscillating based on strength of trend rather than the direction of trend. So you have to keep that in mind because you get, you get some kinds of relationships. Like here we have, it looks like, well, this is showing us a downturn, but it's really not. It's showing us that trending is easing and we're becoming more range bound. So uh, the reason that this uh, took such a big swing is because the prior move was so strong that this turned this thing around and said, well, we're covering the prior area, so we must be in a trading range now. So the signals are much more complex. Now, you could also use the zero line for a check in money flow. Uh, when it's uh, dropping uh, back to zero, that is a range bound market, a fully range bound market. Crossovers uh, from low to high mean an increasingly trending market. Crossovers from uh, high to low mean a decreasingly trending market or more range-bound market. Now, it's a more of a confusing indicator to, to use because uh, you, this is similar price action here and here. But look at the, what happens here. Even though we get a move all the way back up this prior high, this has hardly crossed the zero line. And now it's dropped down to a sort of the lowest low that uh, since last May. So this is kind of a big deal because it's uh, it's showing you that the trend is increasing even though the range is it hasn't really changed range until since the middle of February. But this says that the trend is increasing. In this case, uh, it, you look at other indicators or you look at the price pattern to determine whether it's an uptrend or downtrend. So this is kind of a dangerous situation because of this extent of trend coming back to this uh, almost a almost a multi month high. So you have to watch out for. Uh, the stock to uh, make up for lost ground or perhaps drop down to the 110 or 105 level. Okay, let's move on to the volume oscillator, which is another oscillator. In other words, it'll, it'll cross over a zero line for the most part. So we have volume and oscillator right down here. Now, the volume oscillator it also identifies accumulation and distribution, but it does it by looking at the relationship between two volume moving averages. If the shorter volume moving average is uh, covering ground more quickly than the longer moving average, then uh, it will increase the trending of the volume oscillator. And again, let's see if this is directional. It's not really a directional because it's supposed to turn higher in uh, just like Chaikin's in any trending market. So here we have an, we have an uptrend, uh, uh, but here we also have a downtrend. See how this how we start, we go from range bound market and we start to move across to a trend, but we're actually going down, even though it's in the same direction as these guys. Well, that's the point of an oscillator. An oscillator uh, often, well, it, it, can give you, it can give you directional information, but volume oscillators tend to just look at volume participation and price rate of change rather than directional rate of change. So you see the intensity of a trend. And uh, see, sometimes you get funky signals like here, it hits its highest high or trending high uh, right after, well after the, uh, the um, uh, high of the stock, a few bars after the high, about three or four bars. So you see sometimes, this is a very late signal, but you can also produce early signals too. Uh, this is actually a very early signal right here where it just, uh, it turns higher and just keeps on going. And then you're getting a, a more of a trending. And we even have a little bit of a bounce off of this zero line. Again, this zero line refers to a neutral situation in which neither bulls nor bears are in charge. That might give you more directional information, even though it's non-directional in nature. But it basically tells you it's range bound and uh, the, the, uh, the price range should not be changing that much over time. So it's a very interesting indicator to work with. But it's 
much harder to interpret oscillators like uh, Chekhov's money flow and this oscillator uh, with uh, using sort of a classic, well, when it's high, that's good, and when it's low, that's bad. That's not how oscillators work on average. Finally, let's take a look at balance of power. Now, balance of power, you may, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Warden's uh, charting program, they've used balance of power for years, but it's actually been around before Warden, so it's been around since, I think, like 1991. Now, this, this uh, indicator shows the strength and uh, the strength or weakness of buying and selling pressure. The oscillator is it's plotted the paddle with the, with the zero line. You see, in this case, it's not moving all that far from the zero line, but it does uh, it does uh, it is directional, unlike Chaikin's and unlike uh, the volume oscillator. In other words, when this is above the zero line, bulls are in control, and when this is below the zero line, bears are in control. Now, uh, it looks like it's not traveling much, but every instrument's going to have its own range. And just because you see the range that looks about from here to here, and it doesn't look like a lot. Well, you could change uh, this part over here, and it's going to look a lot different. And other other uh, uh, securities, say you put uh, like GameStop on this thing in, uh, at the end of the year, the start of 2021, you're going to get a, a lot more trending, and you're going to start hitting extremes of one and minus one. So you are looking at uh, the crossovers, which are very important. Here we have an uptrend. Here we have a decreasing uptrend. And it's funny, we get a crossover literally on the date of, of the top back in uh, May of 2020, uh, excuse me, in, in September of 2020. And, and, and it says that bears are in control. Well, bears are in control doesn't mean there's a breakdown, but sure enough, it caught this, uh, caught this uh, uh, downtrend and a very profitable downtrend if you're short selling it. Now, we have a little bit of moves, and you have to look at levels too with this because it, it also looks at uh, depth of trending. Uh, whether the strength or weakness is broad strength or limited strength, and whether it's limited uh, limited weakness or broad-based weakness. So the, the height of the uh, oscillator in relation to prior peaks, not in relation to any absolute number here, determines the strength of the trend. And again, you can pick up very early signals from some of these crossovers. Uh, oh, these, oh, excuse me, not crossovers, they're just directional changes. We've got a lot of whipsaws in here, but we also have a couple of really good signals right here again look how it turned over and that's and it just stayed and it's sort of drifting below and now we've been in a state where uh, bears are controlling this market now for almost two months so that's a short look at the uh at this oscillator and um uh there are a lot more there's something like uh, 22 uh volume indicators that are controlled that are covered by the uh, advanced uh charting program of fx empire